Verse 5, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Well, now David's getting down to the nub of it. We call this, this idea original sin. It's the idea that we're all born in it. We're sinful by nature. We're not born innocent and harmless and good. And then we learn sin as we grow older and our environment contaminates it. Uh, we got Chris here this morning and, and, and you, you know, they just had a baby, little Hope. And I, I know they just look at little Hope and she's so innocent and pure and lovely, but th they need to know, and I know they do, that inside little Hope is a little Jack Jack who can go blah at any moment. Yes, Chris? <laughs> he just went like this. Now, the seeds of our sin, they're born with us on day one, and they start growing in us in, in day one. Rachel's back home going, my baby! Ephesians chapter 2, Paul puts it chillingly. We are by nature children of wrath. And in my thinking of all Christian doctrines, this one is the easiest to prove. This one, human sinfulness, and the sinlessness of Christ. I think those are the two easiest doctrines to, uh, to, to, to prove. And so Don Lamont of CNN, you know, last week said, well, of course we know Jesus' sin. I'm like, excuse me? So, I mean, think about it. How do you prove human sinfulness? Work with me on this. If you took a hundred of the best people on earth right now, a hundred of the most moral, most ethical, most, most virtuous people that are on the planet right this minute, and somehow we could send them away to another planet, a uh, perfect planet where all their needs are met, another Garden of Eden for, for, for them to dwell in, and, and we were to leave them there and come back in a hundred years, do you know what we would find there? Earth too. It's because of what's in us. I watched Walking Dead for a few seasons. You know, the creators of that show understand David here. They understand that the, the real monsters in their universe are not the zombies. They're the humans. Who, when you knock away all the props of civilization that we enjoy, all the comforts and, 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 and all the 401ks and the McDonald's, and we're left to deal with things as we really are, our nature will take over. Now sure, how we are raised, our parents, the environment we grow up in, the education we have access to, all these things have impact on the moral lives that we'll lead, end up living. Uh, these, these things like good parenting, to use modern language, will help mitigate the sin of virus that's in us. But the point is, the Bible's saying, that sin is here. Sin's tendencies, sin's desires are embedded in me by nature. And then David tells us where it's found. He finally gets it. Verse 6, Behold, you delight in truth in my inward being. You teach me wisdom in my secret heart. And then verse 10, a very famous verse. You should memorize this. Pray this often. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And this is why, because sin is in us, in our very hearts, that all of humanity's efforts to kick God to the curb and to create some kind of utopia of our making from the French Revolution to the Russian Revolution, from Stalin to Mao to the Branch Davidians, down to, 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 to Chaz or Chop or whatever they called it in Seattle. All these attempts to create utopia, if we just get rid of the police or get rid of systemic racism, we take care of all the external things, then we'll be fine. It's a lie. It's a lie from the pit of hell because the heart of the human problem has always been the problem of the human heart. 